Latency is a much discussed topic and is an important consideration when designing a digital system or workflow. Inevitably, it's also one of the measurements that is used to compare consoles from different manufacturers. But when looking at the figures, charts, traces, it's important to consider the system as a whole. Each one may offer different workflows, flexibility, processing options, rack connection methods, and these variations will ultimately cause latency differences. Some consoles offer automatic compensation, creating predefined group delays, while others leave the management to the engineer giving them the option of reduced group delay dependent upon routing configuration. The different DSP architectures sometimes dictate the way these processing delays are managed, and plugin-based systems with potentially large latency values all need managing. Then there's converter latency, the time it takes to convert from analog to digital and then back to analog. There may also be differences in the latency between different transmission formats, MADI, OptiCore, Dante, SoundGrid, all capable of carrying multi-channel uncompressed audio but the time it takes to do it is different. With all these factors, there is no simple single answer to what is right or what is better. All these factors need considering. And of course, we need to keep in mind the real world in which we operate rather than a hypothetical perfect world where single measurements could be used to prove one system is better than another. So let's break it down into its component parts. The total latency of a system is usually measured as the time taken to take an analog signal, convert it to digital, get it into and through the console processing, and then back out to the analog world. Yes, there are variations to this, but in, for this video, this is what we're going to use. For a Digico system using a remote stage rack, this can be as low as 530 microseconds at 96K, just over half a millisecond. This is unlikely to be the latency in most systems, but from a measurement point of view, it demonstrates just how quick our conversion and processing is, if you want it to be. A large proportion of latency in these systems is often down to the A to D and D to A stages. It takes time to convert from analog to digital and back to analog. Sample rate plays a part here too. Clocking the converters faster, 96K as opposed to 48K sampling rates, makes the conversion twice as quick and different generations of converters can also have different latencies. For example, the latest Digico 32-bit cards offer ultra-quick conversion with a saving of 42 samples over the previous 24-bit cards. 42 samples represents more than 0.4 milliseconds in time at 96K, which in itself might not sound very much, but minimizing latency wherever possible can only be a good thing. From a transmission point of view, Opticore and MADI deliver audio at very low latencies, even with high channel counts, whereas other network-based formats may well be slower and potentially vary with channel count and configuration. Where Opticore and MADI have fixed latencies, Dante latency will vary depending on the size, topology and setup of the network, and can add as much as 5 milliseconds. Clearly, this needs to be factored in when designing a system. So once the signal reaches the console, then what? If we're going to evaluate the latency of any processing system, especially when it comes to making subjective judgments about how one system might be better or worse than another, we should look to real-world-based scenarios and workflows that users are likely to use. In all the systems that offer latency compensation, the designers have taken a conscious decision to restrict functionality. This is inevitably a restriction in the flexibility of busing and where you can and can't route signals. And then it comes down to simply where the system will add the extra delays. Compensation systems add extra delays to channels or buses so that when they are summed with other signal paths that have longer latencies, the resulting signals are time aligned. These automated systems obviously make life easier for the engineer. They don't have to think about how signals and delays are managed, but the negative side effect is that overall system latency will be increased. If you're using plugin-based architecture, would insert a plugin with a potentially large latency, then your overall system latency can be hugely compromised. If you're mixing front of house, this might not matter. If you're mixing monitors, it most likely will. On this basis, what do you do if you turn latency compensation off, or if you're on a Digico which doesn't offer it? 
Before we get into it, some of you might be asking yourself why we at Digico don't have compensation systems. And the answer is pretty simple. We took the decision to allow ultimate flexibility in signal flow and routing, offering bus to bus routing and the merge input function. This makes the console more powerful, adaptable, flexible, and it allows the engineers to decide for themselves what the signal path should be. On a Digico console, you can route any signal pretty much anywhere as many times as you like. An input simply could go to a bus to be routed out. But an input could also route to a bus and that bus could come back into input channels, be routed to an aux and then back up an input to be sent to the matrix. The combinations are endless. In practical terms, this might be routing the ride symbol to a symbol bus, which in turn feeds the drum bus, which then goes to the master. Or aux sends from both the input channels and the aux sends from group buses could both be used to feed internal effects. And then the effects combined via input channels into an effects bus. This freedom of routing is a key feature of the Digico platform. Each time an additional route is added, a very small amount of time or latency is added to the signal. And it's up to you, the user, to manage these timing differences. If we sum together signals that have taken different paths and look at the resulting frequency response traces, we can see the effect, the comb filtering or phasing, which has a direct effect on the final signal. It's not possible to manage this with any automatic system, as there isn't a single point that you could add delay to that would make the timings consistent. If we restricted our inherent flexibility, then yes, much like other manufacturers, we could compensate. But this would be a step backwards, a reduction in flexibility and power. I've got a quick audio example set up to demonstrate what happens to the audio when timing differences are introduced. We'll focus on the snare drum and I'll switch between two snapshots that change the bus routing. In the first snapshot, the snare is routed just to the drum bus, which in turn feeds the master bus. In the second snapshot, snare is routed to both the drum bus and to the master bus. This double routing results in this comb filtering, which is clearly audible. So if we can't timeline automatically, how is an engineer to manage it manually? It's all about being consistent with routings and audio path lengths, especially when handling signals that are going to be summed. Let's look at the practical workflows around this and how you'd manage this all within a real session. I've set this session up with some typical inputs, so let's build the mix and look at the ways to set it up. If we're just mixing straight to a stereo master bus, it's all simple. The latency down every single SD processing channel is identical, regardless of how much of the processing is switched in. So all things being equal, there's no timing issues when summing them together. In the Quantum Engine, we also offer mustard processing, which adds a very small amount of additional latency to a channel. While we don't automatically compensate for this, it's easy to adjust for this on the appropriate channels using the channel delay feature if it's needed. And mustard processing adds significantly less delay than external processing options often used to add these boutique style effects to the channels. Every time you add a butting route to a signal, you add 17 samples to the signal. That's roughly 0.17 milliseconds at 96k. This in itself is not significant and you wouldn't notice it on a single input. But when summing signals together, it does need to be handled correctly. For example, if you're running your drums through drum buses for processing, you should be consistent with the signal path length for all your drums. There are two easy workflows for this. Just make sure all of your drums pass through the bus for processing. Or if you don't want them all processed, use a second dry bus with no processing to timeline the drum inputs. There's probably no need to do this for all the inputs. If a single input doesn't need additional processing over the options provided on the input channel, it could go straight to the main stereo bus. You might now think that you've introduced timing differences as you sum the inputs together. Your drums might no longer be timed on with your guitars or vocals, but how many of the inputs hitting the preamps at the start are time aligned? It takes sound just under three milliseconds to travel a meter in air. So even a 30 centimeter difference in distance could add one millisecond of delay. 
At this point, microphone distances could play a bigger difference in the alignment of signals over any additional latencies that occur in the processing due to varying bussing structures. Take a single drum skin with two mics on it. A six centimeter difference in distance between the mics and the skins represents 0.2 milliseconds in time, which is more than any additional bussing latency when using unequal processing paths. Then with vocals, mics, guitar amps being DI'd and mic'd up, horns, keys, playback, there are so many differences with the timing of the inputs, we have to take a sensible approach to where we put our time aligning reference and which inputs must absolutely be time aligned. On the subject of physical distance latency, any artist using monitor wedges on stage is likely to be at least two meters from the wedge. So before they even sing or play in time with a the band, they're gonna be roughly six milliseconds behind due to hearing their mix late. And modern digital IM systems also add latency, another point ultimately affecting timing across different sources. So it's important to pay close attention to all aspects of the signal path from the source and not just look at the structure within a console or take individual measurements and specs out of context without considering the system as a whole. For more videos on Digico's range of consoles and features, head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe today.